Hi everyone, welcome back to Mastering UV Mapping and in this episode we are going to be mapping UV mapping this tricky little bit of piping here. So usually UV mapping a cylinder is really straightforward. You would just use cylindrical mapping. But because this one goes around a bend like this, that method doesn't work very well. And you see we need to be able to get it so we can have this nice kind of shower ropey effect going on and so we need our uv map to come out like this one nice long straight line so this is going to be the the finished effect this is what we're going for um but if we have a look at where we are so we currently have this so i've just got the default material on here at the moment and if we go into our uv oh, not that one if we go into our uv editing mode and have a look at the uv map for this we currently just have the standard cylindrical map and that's not going to work for us because we've got some extrusion along here so we need to map this again from scratch so we're going to use a, a completely different method to get this to behave in the way that we want it to but first of all i'm going to put the material on there so that it looks the way i want it to look so i'm going to go into the hypershade so if you're following along if you want to download the shower model uh, and the textures from the link in the video description and below you will get these materials here let's just frame them up a bit better so there's a chrome a hot and cold which is the red and blue and a couple of different plastics that make up the shower head uh, but there's no pipe there's nothing for the shower hose yet so we'll create that now so i'm just going to clear my workspace i'm going to go with a pbs because i want um, this to be physically based and i'm going to name it m underscore shower hose seems like a pretty good name and i want this to be metallic i want it to be pretty shiny so i'm going to have a roughness of about 0 0.2 and i also need to use a normal map and as i said if you're downloading uh, my assets you'll be able to find that in the source images folder so we'll go to the normal map here and have a look in the source images folder and it's the shower hose underscore normal and this gives us all our lovely normal detail so i'll open that up and then you can see let's see if i can just change this to something that shows up a little bit better not really that'll do it a bit better so you can see that's how it's going to appear on our shower hose when we're done so let me just get a viewport in here and i'm just going to dock that over here and uh, we'll just resize that a little bit. Just makes it easier to put my texture on. And so what I'm going to do is, there's my shower hose. I'm just going to drop that on there. Okay, so you can see, even though we should have all this beautiful sort of corrugated effect, at the moment it's all stretched. It looks silly. It's just not working. So we need to improve on that. And that's where our lovely UV mapping comes in. The first thing we're going to do to get um, this particular shape UV mapped is select it. And we're just going to do an automatic projection. And it'll give us something like this. And this is not terrible. It does at least allow the normal map to start to work a little bit. Um, but it doesn't work for what we need. And so before we can make it better, we've actually got to make it a lot worse. So I'm going to put this into edge mode. Select all of my edges. And then I'm going to go to, let me just find my UV toolkit. And we're going to go to cut and sew. And I'm going to do this stitch together command, which you can also get from the cut sew menu here. Or if you're using an earlier version of Maya, move and sew kind of does the same thing. Uh, but we'll stitch it together and we'll create this awful looking mess here. So that, that is not at all useful to us. And again, it's just making the, the normal map not work. But now we can start to work with this. So I just want my channel box back for a second because I want to be able to just ping this back uh, in place in a minute so what I'm going to do while this is in place I'm going to go to modify freeze transformations and that just zeroes everything out so what it means is that if I move this forward which I'm going to do if I just put a zero back in translate Z it'll just pop back into place which is very useful so I'm going to bring it forward so that I can see my end caps here and what I need to do now is I'm going to have to cut some seams into this so that the shape can unfold and that's going to make it work much better so i'm going to start with the end caps first so 
I'm going to go into edge mode and just double click on that top one there. Wonderful. And I'm going to come in here and I'm holding shift and double clicking that. So now I've got the top and bottom end cap selected. And I also need an edge loop around the back. It could be anywhere to be fair, but because I, you generally don't want your seams to be seen. Not that this will be a visible seam, uh, but it's just good habit to kind of put it out of the way. So I'll just hold shift again and double click. And so now I have top and bottom end caps and a line that goes all the way along the back, which is what I want. So what this is also doing is it's just going to cut one here. And I could deselect that, but because these end caps can't be seen, I actually don't care how they look. So I'm just going to ignore them. So that's now ready. And I'm going to go into my UV toolkit again. And I need to cut these edges. So I'll just click on cut. Or again, you can just go into cut, sew, and cut from there. So they are now cut. So the next job is to unfold this. And that's when this will start to become more usable. So I'm going to go into UV shell. I'll just select everything. And then I'm going to go into, let's just close this section for a sec. Into the unfold section. And there's unfold. So we give that a click. And now you can see if we go into shell mode. This shell here is almost perfect straight away, which is brilliant. So if we have a look at our shape here, this clearly isn't right, but it's starting to come together. So what we really need to do now is get this upright, perfectly straight. So in order to do that, I'm going to select an edge, any straight edge. So just double click on that one. And then I'm going to close my unfold section for a sec and I need to go into arrange and layout. And I've selected this edge here because I want to use this command orient to edges. So if I click on that, what it will do is take that as my straight edge and it will put this all upright, which is now much better. So again, if we go back over here, we can see that this is now starting to take shape. Still not there, but we're much, much closer. Next job is if we go into it'll be uv mode i do this and but you can see these edges are wiggly and now to be fair i could leave this as it is and i would pretty much get away with that but it would be a pretty rubbish tutorial video if i didn't show you how to do it properly wouldn't it so i'm going to select all the uvs on this shell here and then i'm just going to close my arrange and layout section and go back into unfold for a second and i'm going to use this straighten uvs option here which is really useful so if we just zoom in a little bit, what it's going to do, you can see some of my lines are a bit wobbly going up and down vertically, and they're definitely wobbly going horizontally as well. So if I just use this option here, straighten UVs, because they're all pretty close to being in line, Maya just works it out for me, and it straightens everything up perfectly. That is now beautifully set up. So I'm just going to go back into shell mode. And then the last thing I need to do really to get this to look right is I'm just going to make this shell much bigger, which will have the effect of tiling our texture. So what I'll do is just bring this central into my 0 to 1 space. And then put my scale tool on. And I'm just going to scale this up until the width of the shell pretty much fills my 0 to 1 space. So there, that's about perfect. So if we go into object mode now and deselect, you can see that we've now got that tiling effect going on. And the contours follow this around perfectly. So these edges look a little bit jagged because I wanted to keep it quite low poly. It also makes it a little bit easier to UV map. And you can still smooth this out afterwards if you want. And then what I'm going to do is just pop this back into place. Like so. And that's the UV mapping done. So as I said, that can be really tricky. A few years ago, that would have absolutely flummoxed me. But using this method, which um, I saw another YouTuber um, using this method, and it just blew my mind. It was amazing. Um, this method will get you out of almost any tricky UV mapping situation to just stitch it all together and then cut in your own seams as long as you know where you need to put them. And we will revisit this again in another video where we're going to use the same method to uv map a teddy bear so i hope you find this technique useful i know i really do 
And I hope that that's going to help you to continue to improve your UV mapping. Because as I've learned from um, trying to teach UV mapping to all my students this year, everybody hates it. And it seems to be the trickiest part of getting into 3D modeling. Okay, so that brings us to the end of another tutorial video, which I can only keep doing because of all my fantastic patrons. These wonderful people support me with a monthly donation to help me keep putting out free videos like this one so that everybody can learn to become a 3D artist, can learn to become a games artist. With that said, I would like to give a big shout out to my two latest patrons who joined in the last few days. Uh, that's hi to Ryan Young and to Eric O'Brien. Thanks for joining the campaign, guys. You rock. And if you want to join the Patreon, then check the link below. Any kind of support is thoroughly appreciated. If you want to take your UV mapping and use of Maya in general beyond what I can cover in my videos, then I really recommend you check out Pluralsight. They've got loads of awesome tutorials. I follow their tutorials myself. That's how I keep on top of things. And if you want to get access to the service, if you use my link in the video description, you can get a 10 day free trial to check the service out. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope to see you all in the next one where we're either going to do a book and we'll take a, a UV map externally to Photoshop to texture there, or we'll do a teddy bear where we'll take um, the UV map out of Maya again and we'll do some texturing in Substance Painter. So we're definitely going to do both of those, I just don't know in what order yet. Okay, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.